Let's get into it. Soul Not For Sale podcast. I got the wife with me. Hello. We got Joe Rogan, Dave Chappelle, and then we're going to be talking about Dave Chappelle's new comedy special. What is it called? The Dreamer? Yeah. It's a great one, and uh, we're going to not only talk about what we thought of it, but we're going to talk about the backlash that he, of course, received for this special. And uh, it's very interesting. You got some information. You got some. It seems like you're looking up some Lil Nas X information. Yeah, we're going to talk about the people that he mentioned in the special and their reactions to it. Yeah, he mentions Lil Nas X quite a bit. I've never been a fan of the guy, but uh, but I I understood when I heard the jokes and everything. So <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to talk about with this special, especially the backlash, especially the reviews. We're going to show you some of the reviews. So ridiculous, in my opinion. All right. Don't forget about IamCoachColin.com. We got Soul Not For Sale. We got The Great Resist. X'd out the Great Reset there. Do not join the Great Reset. Join the Great Resist instead. Discount code is I am Coach Colin. All capital letters, all one word. One L in the name, Colin. Let's get into this clip. As a kid, it was more challenging. This internet makes all the crowds kind of the same. It's, yeah. It, it, they know every reference. Yeah. And, and American culture is still a marquee culture. Like, you know, they know so much about our political lives. They know so much about our cultural lives. So much more than we would know about them yeah. going over there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and on stage, like, I was doing a show in Tokyo. I'd never worked in Tokyo before. What was that like? If I took a picture from the stage and asked you where I was, you'd think I was playing San Francisco. Really? It was interesting. Yeah, some of the people who came didn't even speak English. They just wanted to see the spectacle of... Oh, wow. Because they had heard of me. Oh, wow. That must be wild. It's Netflix, man. Like, look, you get out in that world, Joe, you're, you're famous everywhere. You've never been to these places, but when you get there, they're going to know you. Or there was a thing that happened to me years ago in London where I was in a restaurant and I was kind of waiting for the table and... and when the lady, goes, she asked me my name. She said, what's your name? I go, David. She goes, well, this is David on the list. What's your last name? I go, Chappelle. And she looks up. And I look around and everyone's kind of looking. I could tell they'd heard of me, but they didn't know that that was oh, me. Oh, right, right, It was right. that kind of thing. Yeah. This was this was after I quit the show, but not long after, like 05, 06. What did you do for those 10 years? A lot of shit. I learned a lot. I mean, but it was it was a humble existence. I, you know, I, I had had young children, and uh, I was raising my kids. I was living a suburban life, uh, and then every once in a while I get this feeling like I'm the funniest guy, I gotta get out there, and I would like fly to Denver, do a week in Denver or something, and, and that's when you would read I was doing like these six hour shows. I performed like I was desperate for it, I, lo I loved it. Yeah. And uh, at one point I had done uh, one of these big comedy tours that Live Nation put together, that Oddball tour, and I did all right. I, I mean, I had, I had a good run. I, I wiped out in Hartford, and that was all over the internet. That was the first time that thing had happened to me. Uh, but for the most part, the tour went good, but it was a tough tour for me because it was a long show. I had to close it. You know, uh, my chops weren't as tight as they normally were, but I wouldn't, I didn't suck by any means, but you know, it could have been better. Humbling. It was humbling, but it made me want to go back. And, and the shows were like, every show was like 20,000 seats. They were like all these. What year was this around? Shit. I can't remember. Obama was president maybe. <sighs> I don't know, eight, nine, ten. But you were, there. you were famous for just showing up places. You would just fly in. That's places. the one. I, that's when I started. I, I used to, in the summer, I, I started riding motorcycles, which is like very uncharacteristic of me. But I loved it. I would, and I rode, I said, I'm going to ride my bike across the country. And I did. I cheated. I had a tour bus with me. It was a trailer. So if it rained or something, or if I just wanted to bail, I could. But I rode across the country. I, I, and, and I'd never seen America like that. We talk about how big it is and, and expansive. And man, I saw all the little pockets. On a bike, you know, you really yeah. feel the environment, you see things. Um, and I would. I'd stop and play. One of my favorite birthdays was here in Austin. I, I, I was, I'd never been to Austin, really, and I pulled up on 6th Street. I'd been to Austin, but I'd never seen Austin. Pulled up on 6th Street. It was my birthday. I was riding with the guy. He's like, what do you want to do for your birthday? And, you know, at that time, I wasn't drinking or smoking or anything. Uh, I said, I want to do stand-up. And I found a bar. It was, it was right around closing. And I saw the DJ packing up, and I said, can I use your microphone? And he recognized me, so he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I went up there, and I just started talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, but it was just like, you know, teasing the bar staff as they're cleaning up, talking to patrons, and, you know, get it home fast, buddy, and all that shit. Right. And people laugh, and they kind of, it was like doing, I used to do street comedy in New York. It kind of reminded me of that, like, building a crowd. And after a while, people stopped and listened. Now, now I'm not a tech-savvy dude, but Twitter had come out. And I guess people had started tweeting, like, yo, this is crazy. Dave Chappelle's just in here ranting. Man, it might have took, like, an hour. That place was packed. <laughs> And I must have stayed on stage three or four hours. Wow. And, and you know, they, they closed the door. They locked the door because it was after hours. And I, I was in there killing it. it wow. Was best birthday I ever had. One of the best birthdays I ever had. Sometime around when I turned 40, 
I just decided that I'm going to have fun. You know, like right now, you know, this is a weird thing to talk about, but after DMX passed and, and Black Rob, and, you know, now far more often people from my peer group pass away. And it just makes me feel like it's not a midlife crisis. It's almost the opposite of that. It, it's like, look, I know I don't get to stay here forever. My time is limited and precious, and, and I don't take any of these things for granted. I don't take this money for granted, this platform. And I'm not talking about the fame platform. I'm talking about comedy, this genre. Like, I make it, this genre, it's been so good for me, uh, my social life, the people that I've met, the friendships that I've had, some that I've lost along the way, uh, these memories we make, you know, as the years go on, I'm like, what a special, special way to live your life yeah. and to see the world. Like, it's like when we we, we did those dates, um, where were we, in Tacoma. Seattle and yeah. and Utah, was it? Salt Lake City? Yeah, yeah. And one of those nights, there was a massacre uh, in Dayton. It's not far from where I live. You know, people where I live hang out in Dayton. Was that the night we were there? We were together. When that happened, that same night, the, the the guy that owned one of those comedy clubs in New York was was murdered too. It was like a really dark night, and I oh, found right. all this that's out right. right before I was going on. Like you didn't know, you were already on stage as this news unfolded. I'm sure you got an earful when you got off. Yeah, but I was like, Phew. you know, during the run, we would go places and I'd see flags at half staff, and I'm like, oh shit, that's for like my city. It really hit home. And the the best part of that experience was being with comedians. If anything bad ever happens, comedians are who you want to be with. Uh, you know, nine eleven. I was I was in a room full of comedians because I had to, you know, I was staying on, on on West Broadway and Canal Street, which is not far from the Trade Center. So, like Canal Street, I'm on the north side of the street. From the south down, the city was evacuated, so I got to stay in my hotel. But during the day, we didn't know that we, you know, I had a new baby, and I ended up going to a comedian's house that, I, that, that lived in Greenwich Village. A bunch of comedians were there. As bad as that day was, that was the room to be in. It's something that these guys and girls have always inspired courage in me and levity in me. Something There's some subtext of comedy that everything's going to be okay. I spent the day with Joey Diaz and Ralphie May. Oh, wow. Yeah. 9-11? Yeah. 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 You know, who else would you have rather been with? When you think back at the tragedy, I bet you can think of four or five things you laughed at yeah, we that were, day. Not about the tragedy, but we just laugh. We, we were high as fuck, and we were just freaking out about the fact there's no planes. Like, look at this guy. There's no planes. There's yeah, no planes. it's that. It, it, comedians... Yeah. You know, it's funny that this genre is under attack because cause to me, this is the everything's going to be okay genre. It's under attack because people have this ability to complain about things now, and then people pile on. It's a new thing, and they realize it's very useful. It's a, it's a good weapon, and if you choose targets, you can take targets out. You can go after them, and so it becomes a hobby. It becomes a hobby like if, you know, if you see a, a window and you got a rock, you feel like throwing that rock. And so a lot of times these targets aren't justified, but you can find a justification. You could say, oh, they put these words together in this order, and if you look at it in quotes written down on paper, you go, oh, well, this is uh, ableist, or this is this, or this is that. This is something we can attack. Let's attack. This is transphobic. This is, this is uh, homophobic. Attack. Attack. And they, it becomes, it's a recreation. It's recreational outrage. It is exactly. You know, the last time I came on your show when Donnell was here, and I fucked up. I looked at the comments section. Ah, I'll never do that shit again. <laughs> ah, I'll never do that shit again. First comment is somebody said, Dave looks like he stinks. Word. <laughs> like, word. Like, what, did I do? what did I ever do to you, bud? <laughs> when uh, Rizzo was on with Donnell, that was the first thing I said to Donnell after the show. I go, hey, man, that was fun. Don't read the comments. Yeah. Don't read the comments. No, don't. And Donnell just dove right into that comments, and he was on a deep spiral of mental illness for several days. Yeah, he said, man, I kept saying I interrupt, son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I heard all about it. We was on tour after that. He was, he was ah, he's traumatized. He got shook. It's, I told him, stay out of there. Don't read that shit. You're the same person. You don't want to be affected by those people. No, you don't. No, because they, they just want to bring you down to their level. They're no, miserable. But whoever wrote that comment that said, Dave looks like he stinks, is probably going to watch this and be like, nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> so got congratulations, him. motherfucker. And I can't wait to read your comment about me commenting on your comment. You're in the big time, bitch. <laughs> your mother stinks. <laughs> comment on that, too. Ah. Yeah, it's a weird thing, comments. <laughs> comments are a weird thing. I mean, it's yeah, it is. But like you say, and here's the rub, I, you can just not read them. Yeah. Or you can just not click on that special that's going to hurt your feelings. At a certain point, you got to look at this shit like food. What are, you, what are you eating? What are you putting in your mind? That's what I keep saying about me when people get outraged about my podcast. I'm like, well, you don't have to listen to it. Like, why are you, li you listening to it, looking for things that are pissing you off? Like, what are you doing? Yeah, it's like listening to someone's ass when they take it. shit and be like, ew, you farted. <laughs> well, well, what the fuck are you doing in here anyway? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I wanted I wanted that last part to play. That's exactly what it's like. 
You like went to the <laughs> stall next to them. You're like, let me hear what's going on in here. <laughs> it's so funny. But yeah, I just wanted to play that part because they talk about it being under attack. And it yeah. does seem like it's the everything's going to be okay genre. Because after we listen to that special, you know, you feel a, you know, obviously we, we don't know. Do I know any trans? I, I know a couple. I know a trans comedian. But you feel connected to the people who get made fun of when you get made fun of like you know like everything that he touches on you feel a connection to it yeah you know so it's funny that uh well i mean it's not funny but yeah it gets attacked like immediately after yeah for sure you try and bring everybody together and then that happens but did you i i wanted that to i wanted that to play also because i know you didn't know about that that's what he used to do there was a 10 year break in his career mm -hmm. and he would just randomly go to places yeah no i didn't know that at all that'd yeah. be insane he'd just randomly show up places I've watched there. There used to be. I don't know if it's still there, but there was a set he did. I forget where it was, but it was five hours, and I watched that set so many times. Hmm. And he's just wow. sitting there, and he's like, "I gotta go. I, I need cigarettes." And they're like, uh, "They just, they him just cigarettes. gave him cigarettes." And he's like, "I want. I gotta go eat." And they're like, "Well, what do you want?" And he's like, "Sushi." <laughs> and then it's like he's like doing stand up for an hour and then all of a sudden someone comes with like the sushi and they're here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's so crazy. That's it's so, so crazy. crazy. And he used to do that all the time. Hmm. I remember seeing a set because when this happened, when he disappeared, he was the biggest thing in my life. Like I was watching the Chappelle show, I was watching it on repeat. It was the funniest thing ever. I was watching his stand up specials. And then all of a sudden this whole controversy happened where out of nowhere, he wasn't doing the show anymore, and he just disappeared. Hmm. Like, he just stopped doing comedy, and it was, like, a shock to everybody. So I would always scour YouTube looking for him. And I remember seeing him doing a club. Uh, it was, like a, a, like, a basement club in London. Like, he would hmm. do the most random, weird things. And uh, it was to the point where he was trying to smoke because he always smokes on stage. Yeah. And... <laughs> And security comes up to him and is like, you can't smoke in here. And he's like, you, for real? And like, everybody's like, come on. You know, for real, man? He's like, oh. That's so funny. And he had to put it, he had to put it out. It was like, a, it was interesting to see all these random weird sets just popping up everywhere. Yeah, that's crazy. I and mean, people just wanted them to do the show again. They just wanted them to make comedy again. And he just wasn't doing it. Wouldn't take pictures with anybody. Hmm. Like nothing. He just stayed in Ohio, yeah. farmland. And that was it. It was a it was a wild wild time, <clears throat> very interesting. Like he says, uh, he talks about you know I, I would I would think to myself I'm the funniest guy. It's a weird thing to know you're the funniest person, and uh, you're like I gotta go out there and and do it. Mm -hmm. But you're like you're not doing it at all. It's such an odd thing. And that's what he wanted to do for his birthday. I thought that was nice. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, he started when he was 14. Wow. And he's like 50, like I think he's around Joe Rogan's age. Yeah. He's been doing it forever. That's crazy. Like forever. It's a long time. Since he's a little kid. Like hit puberty and, mm -hmm. and hit the stage at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Very interesting stuff. But yeah, let's get into the special. The we I, I just wanted to show that because they were talking about, you know, pretty much touching on the whole attack that happens to people and where yes. he was before and now we're getting into where he is now. Yeah. Everything. We watched this on um New Year's Eve. I think that's oh, the yeah. first day it came out. Is that is that yeah. what we watched? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then, like, as we were watching it, like, we knew there was going to be some backlash. Yeah, yeah. The first joke. Yeah, exactly. The first joke. Yeah. Oh, I already knew before even, because you had to convince me to watch it, because I was like, um, I don't want to, because Chappelle and when you, when you, when you do stand up, and even if you don't do stand up, but I do stand up. And Chappelle comes on, you have to pay attention. And I like to be on my phone. Like, I just have a, a horrible phone addiction because <laughs> I'm always making thumbnails and doing stuff. So, and looking for clips and this and that. So, I was like, ah, I, I want to pay attention. And, and then we watched it. And of course, I was fully locked in. And it, yeah, it was great. Mm -hmm. Thanks for convincing me. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, that first joke right away. <laughs> Straight to the trans people. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to ruin it for anybody. We won't ruin any of the jokes. It's called burning bits. We don't want to burn any bits. Yeah, no. But it was a uh, it was a really funny joke. And you know the like the worst part of all the news backlashes? What is that they burn the bits all the time? And oh, exactly yeah. like Joe was saying, like when you see it black and white in an article, it's very different. Oh yeah. Than someone's delivery. Oh yeah, especially his. 
Yeah. Because it's like a like like you were talking about it, like it's so engaging when you tell stories like that right there. That was that was just minutes, but that felt much longer than it actually was. Yes. Because when you're listening to him, I don't know, he he messes with time as you listen to him. Yeah, he like weaves a story and then yeah, it's, and it's, then we'll deliver his punchline, and you're just so caught off guard. Yeah, exactly. That that's part of the like most of the reason why it's funny. It's gonna take me. It's gonna take me years, decades of stand up in order to not sound like Dave Chappelle, because of how much I've watched. <laughs> I watched so much. I used to watch it going to sleep. Yeah. And be asleep and have it on repeat and well, be listening to getting into to your us. brain. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, it's there forever. It's funny. Forever. Do you want to open up that Rolling Stone article? Yeah. <laughs> that one made me laugh. Even the headline. I was like, who are these people? The Rolling Stone article. That was, that was really funny to me because, um, here, where is it? That was really funny to me because I was going through the Rotten Tomatoes and then all of a sudden we realized like there's only four negative reviews and one of them is from them. Yeah. And what makes what it makes me notice before you get into it is that they're using that as a platform to get exposure on their articles. Yes. Because this is really for people to be like, I didn't like it. And this is why. Yeah. Every single one of these is a journalist of some kind. Yeah. That's trying to get exposure. So when you're if there's millions of people looking at this special and only four negative reviews, yeah. everybody's hitting these like. Exactly. Smart. Yeah. Smart, but I see through it. When I was searching for like the reaction to this special, mm -hmm. it was all extremely negative. Really? Yeah. Like all the news articles, like nobody wanted to come out and say. It was hilarious. Yeah. Absolutely hilarious. Exactly. So the Rolling Stone headline just says, Dave Chappelle's the dreamer proves he's obsessed with trans people, <laughs> which is like a hilarious headline by itself. Oh, man. That's so good. Look how happy he is. And yeah, he's like so happy to grinning. Say, say things about people. <laughs> right. But yeah, yeah. Very um interesting take that they all have on it. Mm -hmm. Especially it and this is the thing, you know, like we're reading nineteen eighty four and it's one of those things where you are you see the thing and you're like, This is hilarious. And then you see the mainstream media and they're like, No, no, no. Yeah. This was it's like they terrible. want to tell you what to think. Yeah. It's re it's weird. It's yeah. weird. Because you were seeing it in real time. Like we literally watched it and then the next few days it's like this is what they're trying to put in the people's heads. Mm -hmm. really there was um a quote from that Rolling Stone article that stood out for me. It what? said, uh, it's unfortunate that Chappelle's The Dreamer is, like some of his prior Netflix specials, obsessively fixated on the trans community because it's not an area he particularly excels at, yeah, resorting that was... to puerile premises and punchlines. <laughs> that was in the um, the reviews Oh here. my gosh. So they're just like recycling their own words now. Yeah, exactly. That's so silly. That's what I mean. Yeah. That's exactly what it in... says right here. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. Same so they thing. just like copy and paste it from their own article. That's so dumb. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. But then I looked at the Rotten Tomatoes to begin with in the first place to see like what the general public thought of it. And it got like an 84% approval rating. Mm -hmm. So 84% of people liked it. Of course. And a couple journalists did not from the looks of it. And you know what's funny? A couple of journalists did not. A couple of journalists weren't allowed to. Not allowed to as a journalist. Yeah, that's true. If you work for the Rolling Stone, you're not allowed to be like, "This was great. This was a great spot. This was masterful work." You can't say that. You'll get. You'll literally get fired. Yeah. For liking a comedy special, so you, like they can't. Yeah, crazy. But you all at the same time you have to jump on. Hmm. You have to jump on a story, mm -hmm. and this is a big thing. He's the best comedian in the world. He's the best comedian of all time. Yeah. Are it's very like. Besides Lenny Bruce, Lenny Bruce only comes into the conversation because he was first and he like crafted the art that everyone does now. Yeah. But other than that, Dave Chappelle's the greatest. Mm -hmm. And you know what that reminds me of? There's a guy named David Peckman. Peckman, I believe. He's like a very left leaning, does what I do basically. He's a very left leaning guy. And when Tucker Carlson left Fox, when he got fired from Fox, he did his first show, Tucker Carlson. And mm -hmm. everybody was like, wow. And it got so many views. And it was 100 million. Everybody was like, wow, he's doing it. This is amazing. And because this guy had to make something about this, he had to tear down what Tucker Carlson was doing. Yeah. But it was the weirdest thing because Tucker Carlson, I've been doing this for a while, right? David Peckman's been doing it longer. 
So he's like, oh, look at this show. Like, what is he doing this in a spare room? <laughs> like, what is this? He has to move his own teleprompter. His show, his first one was higher production value than mine or his. Yeah. And he still was trying to tear it down Aww. as like, oh, this doesn't look good. That's so oh, funny. Oh, man, this is ridiculous. And if you have to poke fun at like what something looks like, yeah. then that's the only thing to poke fun at. Yeah, you already lost kind of. Yeah, that's very base yeah. humor. Yeah. That's nothing. I wanted to make a video about it, but I don't, I don't, I didn't want to give any time to that type of thing. Yeah, that's silly. I was silly. like, this is so silly. He's like saying it's not good and like he's doing what we're doing. Yeah. It's like spare room. Like, yeah. In a, in a mansion probably. Like who cares? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it made no sense. Anyway, let's keep going. Yeah. He also um, made comments about uh, Madison. What is it? Madison Cawthorn is yes. his name. Yes. The former congressman. Because Was he a he's, congressman? Uh, yeah. Oh. Because he's disabled. I did not know that. Yeah. But then um, this guy was super nice about it. Like, mm -hmm. said he loved the jokes. He knew they were coming because his uh, he had gone to the, one of the shows. Ah. Oh, okay. And then if you, if you scroll down in that article from TMZ, you can actually see pictures of Dave Chappelle and this guy together. That's him at the, at the show. Yeah, they showed this. Um, again, this is not a big spoiler. This is like at the end credits, but they showed this guy, yeah, is laughing like this, and then they showed he him. He was actually, at the show in Tampa. Yeah, he was with him. Like, yeah, and then he, uh, Dave Chappelle saw him back, saw him from the audience, and invited him backstage to hang out. Of course, of course. So it's like this is the right way to take jokes. Like yeah. it can be funny. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's the, like why is anybody getting so upset? It's ridiculous. That's the thing. So many people get upset for other people. Yes, I think know? that's more the issue. So many people get upset for other people. Like um, <laughs> we were <laughs> we were watching this weird thing with Daniel Tosh. And he was like throwing out these weird, like they weren't real slurs. They were just like oh, weird, that was so funny. weird names he was coming up with. I can't even remember what some of them were now. And like apple picker or something. Apple picker. <laughs> um, and the one that was sugar taster. And then this yeah. white woman was like, I don't like that. <laughs> and he was like, why? He's like, what's wrong with sugar taster? And she's like, and she's sitting next to a black guy. She's like, well, I mean. <laughs> And he's like, why are you looking at me? He's like, what the? Yeah. <laughs> he's like, what does it even mean? Neither of them know what it means. Yeah, it's just made up But she's stuff. already offended. Yeah, on his behalf. <laughs> on his behalf. Just assumed it was about it. Yeah. It was so dumb. It's so crazy. But that happens constantly. People getting offended for other people. Yes. Yeah. You know? So that's exactly what's happening with this guy because a lot of these articles talk about him punching down. You know? And that's always a weird thing because who's to say that he's punching down? When in ref reference to this guy, this good looking guy who became a, what did you say, a congressman? Yeah. So who's to say this is a punch down? But also even all? just the term punching down insinuates that those people are below him. Yeah. Which is more offensive than anything he said. <laughs> yeah. That's what I mean. Like punching down at the trans community. Like what? Yeah. What do you mean? What are you saying? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How is Dave Chappelle above I'd them? love if somebody said that to me because I could be, be like, what What do you mean by that? Yeah. What do you mean punching down? Yeah. They're <laughs> and punching just have down. them stumble. Yeah. Right. Because this guy has no problem with it. But that's, I don't know. It happens a lot. You see that a lot. At least I see that a lot when it comes to like black jokes. If it's like an all white crowd, I've had this many times, even just at shows at the you know, open mics and stuff. It's a it's a mainly white crowd. There's a white guy and he's telling some kind of black joke, and it's like you need that person, that black person, to be like, "It's funny, guys. It's okay." <laughs> like you know, it's like they'll even look for approval. There'll be like one black guy in the audience, and he'll laugh, and they'll be like, "Okay, yeah, yeah. I can laugh a little bit. Yeah, not too hard." Just, just hard enough. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> like I recently saw this guy. I actually know this guy Ben Bankus. He was making a joke, and there was one black guy laughing like really hard. And he, uh, he goes, "Thank you for being the approval for all these people. <laughs> like, thanks. It helps." He's like, "I should bring you on tour with me." <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. we have um, the other link I sent you was uh, the reaction of Little Nas X. Oh yeah, Little Nas X. This yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Little Nas X. I'm not into Little Nas X. I don't like somebody who uh, goes into the devil. Yeah, he does a lot. Worshipping really. odd stuff. Yeah. Myself. 
And then I really don't like him because now he's saying that he's Christian. Yeah, he mentions that like in this article too. And it's really just like, ugh, I don't know. I don't like the guy. Yeah. I don't, I don't like what he's about. It seems like he'll just do anything. Yeah. Anything for money, anything for attention. Zero integrity. Yeah. Ever since I, like I said, I said to you off camera, ever since I saw that interview, because his first song was uh, Old Town Road, yes. I believe. And a lot of people, the people interviewing him were like, you know, there's a lot of kids that like that. And now you're taking this other turn towards this kind of raunchy type of stuff. And he's like, F your kids. Mm -hmm. He's like, I don't care. Like the That's people crazy. who like helped them. I don't care about them. I don't care about those kids. Yeah. And it's just like, ugh. like what? Yeah. And and because of who he is, because of the community that he's a part of, black and otherwise, nobody called him on that or nobody because if Dave Chappelle said that, hey, there's a lot of kids that like he was like, F your kids. People would be like, What? What did you yeah. just say? But because he's a part of a certain group, for some reason, he doesn't get called out about that. Yeah. But yeah I just find it so funny too that um basically his take is that Dave Chappelle is like using old material mm. because he divorced the devil three years ago. Yeah, yeah, sure he did. Yeah, exactly, which is absolutely ridiculous. But then if you scroll down, there was like a tweet from... Once you um, sell your soul, that's it. Yeah. It's, it's, you're done. Yeah, exactly. And he definitely did. So now he's trying to go back to these like... This one? No, the one with the um, the four images of him, the cartoon one, yeah. So then he starts like putting out like these pictures and things. Like you said, he was really into like kind of devil worship yeah. and then all of a sudden he's christian and he's putting this out but it's still like devil worship he's he has a video mm. depicting the devil and he's tongue kissing the devil and yeah. working on him and giving him a lap dance yeah. it's ridiculous to me like this is still a very similar thing oh yeah yeah what he's doing like here. he's like covering his eye and then yeah he's doing he's doing all this stuff he feeds into it he even made shoes that had um i believe they had blood in them Mm. They actually had blood like in the soles. There's like a little oh, capsule yeah, yeah, yeah. thing, and he had there was like blood in them. Gross. He's just uh, yeah, he just does anything. And then people from his his life, like high school life and you know early adulthood, are like he's not gay. Like, he's not a gay guy. <laughs> you know, and he could have easily just been hiding it and came out. But a lot of them are like he's doing this just for money. Like everything you see is just for money. Wow. And I, I, I myself, I've already told the story where I have a friend who is gay. This guy that I met on set a long time ago. He's a gay guy. And he came out as non-binary. He's a singer. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, man. I'm like, I didn't know. I'm like, sorry, man. Because, you know, like if I'm friends with someone, I want to be respectful to whatever they got going on. And I was like, I'm sorry, man. I didn't even know. And I've been calling you man and this and that and the whole time. And he's just like, he's like, bro. He's like. It's not real. My manager told me to do that. Stop. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. So He's funny. like, my manager said it would just be good. I was like, are you for real? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, you know, I'm not like that. He's like, he's like, whatever. Huh. He's like, it doesn't matter to me. He's like, but yeah. That's hilarious. Because I was like, oh, shoot. I'm like, I've been calling him dude and for so long. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's Lil Nas X. And then what else did I send you? There was an MSNBC article as well. MSNBC? Yeah. Did you get that one? I don't know. Let's see. It was about, um, it's an opinion piece. Oh, really? Fan yeah. Fantastic. And the, the headline on it is Dave Chappelle can't stop punching down. Exactly what we were talking about. Oh, really? And that's not the worst part. Oh, it's not? <laughs> that's what it says in the headline. MSNBC. <clears throat> I don't see it here. It should be the last one, I think. In the, the links one. that I sent you. Oh, I do see it. I tend to block them out. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks. When I see it, I just... <laughs> All my research. I just kind of... It just blocks out. <laughs> There's a blue bar in front of my eyes when that happens. Oh, MSNBC? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me just uh, switch over here. Yeah. So this opinion piece is down. interesting. It's basically breaking down the reasons why this author thinks that Dave Chappelle is still doing trans jokes. Mm. And some of the reasons are... What are they? I would love to know what their reasoning okay. is. Let me let me find that piece exactly to tell you what it is. One of the reasons I agree with. What? But they don't seem to be. Um, they don't seem to be like believing in that reason. They're just uh, putting it in because they have to. Okay. So one of the reasons they said was that he's actually a homophobe. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. 
So that I don't think is true, obviously. Honestly, honestly, if you've been, I worked, I worked in film and television for years, small amount of time compared mm-hmm. to what he's done. He started as a comedian, actor, working, movies, script writing. If, if for you to be in show business for that long, you will not have, if you had a problem with gay people at the beginning, it will go away. Hmm. Because you're going to be exposed to so much. Yeah. So much. And realize that everybody's a human being. Yeah. And, and, well, and on top of that, when you're a comedian, you don't care. Yeah. You just make fun of everybody. Well, that's the whole point. It's just about being funny. Yeah. So if a gay guy walks into the room and he's funny, it's just like, well, that's a comedian. We're all comedians. We're all connected through this microphone. Yeah. And this this thing that we do. No one cares. Yeah. And it's funny, too, because if a comedian is gay and makes fun of himself or gay people, that's fine. Oh, it's hilarious. Yeah. It's some of the best. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, that's just me. It's some of the best stuff. There are other... just, just like when a black comedian does it. He's making fun of black people. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. All, it's all fine. It's fine. We have the best insights on ourselves. <laughs> yeah, you exactly. Know? Like you can everybody. point things out. Yeah. But interesting. So he's a homophobe. What else? Yeah. The other one was that um, he traffics in homophobic humor because it's profitable traffics in yes that's what they said okay Uh, (laughs) because it's what because it's profitable not really and it says he may have been canceled for doing so but again and again he goes back to it he hasn't been canceled he's never been canceled they mean that we they when they attempt to cancel him yeah it hasn't worked that's what they're talking about when we attempt he keeps doing it yeah he keeps doing the thing we tell him not to do and that's just terrible because they don't like that but that it, it it's way more it's way better Especially as a black comedian, I know to just talk about black people, it's way better. <laughs> it's that it's way better. Yeah, because you have so much more insight, you have so much more material. You can push the envelope as much as you want, and no one can say anything to you. True. There's no backlash at all for the things you say, at all. Yeah, because what are they gonna say? Chris Rock has a ma- a crazy bit about saying how n words don't read and can't read and don't like to read and this and that and it's like it's stuff that i remember hearing as a kid and i'd be like you can play this at a clan rally this is crazy the <laughs> stuff he's saying and there's no backlash to him because of that it's way easier just to talk about yourself it's way easier to focus on race mm. way easier to yeah. focus on race you know mm-hmm. that's why when i'm on stage i still do it because <laughs> i'm a baby comedian yeah i'm a little baby comedian i think you know and then the reason they were saying that i kind of agreed with is um that he's trying to make a larger point about comedy and identity for sure and saying that things are just jokes and toughen up and don't take it so seriously yeah that's that's definitely the thing i think it is and also it is it is the right now that is the elephant in the room of society yeah so you do have that is what comedians are supposed to do yeah you're supposed to push on that thing. You're supposed to make jokes about it. You're supposed, you're supposed to kind of take it and look at it from every single angle. Mm-hmm. You know, and kind of give it to society and say, there you go. That thing that you're afraid of, that thing that you might hate, that thing that you might love. Here's every single nuance about it. Yeah. And here it is in a funny form. So, you know, don't take it so seriously. Yeah. Don't get so bent out of shape over it, you mm-hmm. know, so, which is actually a good thing, in my opinion. I don't know. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. I think it's also just really smart because he got so much um, shit for it with his previous special mm. that he's doing it again now Yeah, to be like, this isn't going to stop. Like, yeah. it's okay. This is like, it's a normal thing to make fun of everybody. Yeah. The jokes don't stop. The jokes don't stop. And especially because when you talk about his last special, I'm pretty sure it was his last special where he talks about, he first off, he had a trans comedian opening for him. Yes. Yeah, she was opening. Well, I don't know if she was opening all the time, but she did open for him. They had a relationship. They were friends. Yeah. And she passed away. She. she yeah, he yeah. started with that story. Yeah. So it's like he, I don't know, to, to act like as if this is like a hateful person, a homophobic person. It's just, it's nonsense. It's just what they do. This is just what the mainstream media does. They yeah. just. I know. It's crazy. They. they like to punch down <laughs> they do yeah they're the ones that punch down constantly yeah <laughs> it's funny yeah they try it but not even punch down they try and like push people down because dave Chappelle is not on a level that's anywhere beneath yeah of course anyone. of course so they're trying to just push him down under the waves yeah 
yeah, it's uh, interesting. Well, because they want it to stop. There, there's a large part of mainstream uh, and people in power that don't want people to get along. You know, in World War II, I think I told you this before, in World War II, Hitler made sure to close all of the cabaret bars because the Jewish performers, they did like song and dance, but it was a lot of it was funny. Mm. They would do a lot of funny things. They were comedians. They were always comedians. That's why you see largely, you know, when African-Americans were first uh, in the 20s and, you know, uh, around the ending of slavery, they were performers. Jewish people, same thing. They were in Europe just going around performing all the time. Yeah. And Hitler made sure to close those places down because he knew that if you could laugh with somebody, you could laugh at somebody, then you're not going to have, you're not going to be able to develop hatred for them. Exactly. So he made sure to shut all those places down. So there's there's a little bit of this where they want people it when when a comedian is massive, when there's a bunch of comedians, when comedy becomes massive, the division, the the divides that we have, they get deteriorated Mm -hmm. because that's what comedians tend to do. They tend to look over and be like white people. Let me think of all the things I can make up about white people. And then there's a white comedian. He's like black people and then the asian people (laughs) and they're all just doing it back and forth back and forth until all the divides are just they just crumble yeah because people start to understand like this is that everybody does funny stuff everybody has (laughs) really funny stuff yeah really really funny stuff so yeah what else the only other thing i was thinking was that it's um i feel like it's actually beneficial like you were saying to bring to light some of these things because even if if somebody has some hate in their heart And they think negative things about trans people. And then they see this special and they're like, oh my God, I was thinking that. Ha ha ha. Yeah. It makes it so like the levity it brings to it. Yeah. Changes their mind. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. You know, it's uh, (laughs) funny. um, There was a comment. Somebody (laughs) somebody was like, um, you know, it's taken me a while to trust you, coach, you know, with you being black and all. Like, but, <laughs> and I was like, "What?" And then it's so, so funny because I, I just wrote um I just wrote LOL and I was like, "Man, I really appreciate it." And then he wrote back. He's like, "Oh, he's like, you know, I I hate the way it sounds, but you know what I mean." And I'm like, "Yeah, I know what you mean, man. I I definitely get what you mean." But that's the type of thing, right? Like now he's gonna be able to go forward, and the next guy he sees that looks similar to me with like a hat and a hoodie, he'll be like, "Okay, maybe he's like coach." You yeah, know, he'll have that yeah. little thing. Maybe he's like coach. Okay, let's see. Okay, no, he robbed me. Okay, he's not like coach. <laughs> he's. <laughs> oh my god. Oh man, that really made me laugh though. I was laughing so hard when I yeah, saw that. Yeah, that's so funny. Because he put it in brackets with you being black. And <laughs> Just to clarify, you know. <laughs> but you know, and and uh, for me, my friend uh, Moon Moonjai, the black guy who's gay. Like we met on set because we were all just, you know, just trying to get through this movie and, uh, you know, me being able to talk to him and actually be friends with him. That kind of broke down a lot of things for me. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, this guy's just he's just a dude. He's just a yeah, guy. Exactly. You know, and we never had to talk about anything in terms of relationship or anything like that. Like what, you know, his preference or what he was doing with guys or anything because he was just a guy. Yeah, that was it. He was just a guy. And, you know, you need that. You need that. You need things that can break down these barriers. And, again, the media, well, the media, whoever controls the media, the they, they don't want you to break down the divides. No. They really don't. They like those walls up. Yeah. I was actually, I don't know if you heard about it. There's a movie that just came out. So there's the Leave the World Behind that the Obamas, Mm -hmm. like, helped produce or whatever they did. Now there's another one called Civil War. And I was just thinking of like divides because this civil war movie is basically America erupts into civil war. Okay. It's everywhere. And I just noticed that the message that they're sending is that it's not the elite that are the problem. It's your neighbor. It's the Trump supporter. It's the left leaning person. It's the guy at the store. It's, it's the people, it's your whole community. That's the issue that the, that is the thing that you should be afraid of. That's crazy. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. It's a really, Again, people have told me to watch uh, Leave the World Behind. I don't want to watch it. I don't want to watch stuff like that. But you don't want to support it. No, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see it. I don't even even like Obama. I'm (laughs) watching this movie for him. I'm not watching this movie. What am I doing that for? Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> and it's the same thing like Joe and Chappelle were saying too. It's if you don't, if you don't yeah. want to see it, don't see it. Yeah, true. If you know something's going to upset you, don't watch it. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. You do not have to follow people into the washroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> to know what they're doing. You don't have to do it. Yeah. But people never do that. You know, it's funny. It's funny. Uh, thinking of a commenter again, they actually just wrote back to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They were like, I made a video about Trump, and they were like, I'm so tired of hearing about Trump. And they wrote this whole thing. I just saw a paragraph. I saw like five sentences. And I'm like, well, you know what? You know, you're telling <laughs> YouTube that you actually do want to see this. Yeah. Because every time you see it, you write a paragraph under the thing. So YouTube's like, oh, this person engages with this content. And he clicked on it to begin with. Yeah. And always put Trump in the so, title. So obviously he likes this. We're going to keep showing it to him. Yes. So I'm like, if you're sick of it, you got to stop doing that. Making and then, himself enraged. And yeah, exactly. And then before uh, before we started, I just saw like the first sentence. They're like, I write paragraphs because. And, like, <laughs> and it's another paragraph. I'm like, well, they're just going to keep showing you. At least I'll show you my stuff. I don't always talk about well, it. Oh, it's but, okay. Engagement's but, engagement. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Thanks and for the that, that's YouTube. YouTube doesn't care. Like, no algorithm cares. No. They're just like, this is the thing you looked at for minutes. Yes. We're going to keep showing that to you. Yeah. We have to. And commented on. So if you don't like the, the, the special, just uh, don't watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Very interesting stuff. But yeah, those, uh, the fact, that's a real bombshell that I realized that these people are just journalists trying to push their articles. Yeah, exactly. I did not realize that. Like, look at this one. This one is from Indian Express. Where is it? Where is it? Indian Express. Is it this one? No. Okay, so we'll just start with the last one. So this one at the bottom here, this is from Ian Thomas Malone. And Ian Thomas Malone is just trying to plug his or her, because they're transgender, film critic, podcast. They're just trying to plug their stuff. Hmm. Do they put a link in there too? No, when you go to full review, it goes here. Oh. So it's not even, because if it's a regular person, you click full review, it just show more text. Yes, exactly. But they're like, no, no, no. I want you to go to my website. That's crazy. Because you want engagement on your website. Yeah, you don't hate Dave Chappelle. You love Dave Chappelle. Yeah. If he didn't do this, look at this. This view get this video is going to get at least 5,000 views. At least. Yeah. Now you're getting this. You love Dave Chappelle. You're a fan. <laughs> you were waiting for this. Then you go to the next one, another person who made a review. What is this? This is uh, Hollywood and Tutu, right? Mm -hmm. This is, again, this is nuts. And this one wasn't so bad. They're kind of back and forth on it. They were, they were kind of gave a uh, more measured review. Yeah. And then the other one was Rolling Stone. And then the other one was the Indian Times. Like, you're just plugging your stuff. You yeah, love Dave crazy. Chappelle. You love what he was doing. And you the don't best care part about, about like, those communities. The plugging their own stuff is that that might not even be what that individual believes in. That's what they were told to write about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, at least with Ian. That one at least is like a personal website. Yeah. So maybe. But like for the big ones, like. Arguably worse. Ian, you know what you're doing. <laughs> you know what you're doing. They know what they're doing. Yeah. See that? I'm like 2024. They. They. They know what they're doing. <laughs> very well very much so interesting stuff yeah i didn't know i didn't know people did that on that website because i ignore that all the time yeah because i don't have to go to a website to figure out if people like things because i don't care exactly i want to know if i like it i know why would you go to a website <laughs> and decide based on what other people say if you like something yeah that'd be weird right mm -hmm. but some people do that but all in all i mean we didn't even really touch on our thoughts i thought it was incredible yeah, I liked it. The hour went by so fast. I was so shocked when it was yeah, done. Yeah, that's how he does it. He he messes with time when you're listening to him talk and the engaging and like that first joke. Like you don't realize it, but that first joke is like f almost five minutes. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, and, yeah. And then you're laughing and all of a sudden the next thing comes. Yeah. It was, it's masterful. You know, Martin Scorsese once said, because somebody was asking him about Stanley Kubrick and if he thinks he's better than him or something like mm -hmm. that. And Martin Scorsese was like, he goes, when Stanley Kubrick makes a movie, he goes, we all go to the theater and we learn. Oh, He's that's like, nice. just so you understand. He's like, we learn when he makes a movie and that's it. Hmm. So there's like no argument. Like he's the teacher. And the same thing goes with Dave Chappelle. Whenever he makes a special, everybody just, it's just time to watch the thing. And that's it. And just see what he did. Yeah. And just see. You, you watch it and you go, this is how comedy works now. Yeah. This is how it works. 
This is how it works. And you know, you won't be able to do it because what he does is taken years of just boos and claps and laughs and all this hard stuff for decades. But you take it in and you go, okay, that's the thing. That's the beacon, <clears throat> you know? Yeah. And that's another reason why I think he does it more so. Because if he gave in to the woke mob, you know, what is someone like me who's just starting out? What, what am I going to think? Yeah. I'm going to think I have to give in or I should at least give in. So he's being this beacon of like, we don't give in. We don't stop. We keep doing the thing. They tell us no. We keep doing the thing. It's fine. Yeah. You know, we still get the Netflix deal. I we am still surprised Netflix paid him for it, to be honest. Well, Netflix loves him. Yeah. He, he told a story about Netflix. They they apparently own the Chappelle show. Hmm. I think I think it was Netflix. HBO owned it. And Dave Chappelle was like, don't watch it. And then Netflix at some point either bought it or something. But Netflix did something that they didn't have to do. They didn't have to pay him this money. And I think they opted out of showing the Chappelle show on their network because hmm. he was like, it's because he requested it. Yeah. He was like, it's going to hurt me like having to see that and to know that I don't own that. And I was in such a bad spot and like they took everything from me wow. and they were like, okay. And they just didn't do it. So he loves Netflix and Netflix loves him. I mean, he's the biggest comedian in the world. Yeah. That's like, that's like Spotify being like, like, you know, mm -hmm. being surprised that Joe Rogan's getting paid by Spotify. It's like, it was, yeah. you're the best and this is what we <laughs> do. So it's like, <laughs> no problem, whatever. Yeah, say whatever you want at that point. Yeah, exactly. There's been very few things that Spotify mm. has taken down uh, out of JRE. You know, most things that got taken down from his podcast are things that he requested, like the Chris D'Elia episode and stuff mm. like that. Like he does that himself. Yeah. You know, they don't. They don't. They don't touch these guys. When, when you get to a certain point, they don't touch you. They just leave you alone. Mm -hmm. They just let you create the thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know? It was funny because on uh, New Year's Eve when we watched this, I had in my mind like, oh, we'll just like watch a bunch of comedy specials and like that'll be a fun night to like yeah. do that. And I was like, in my head, I was like, we need to watch Chappelle last. Yeah, of course. Because I knew it would ruin all the other yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you try to watch anything else yeah. after, you're just kind of like, that's, yeah, that's why he's the best. And he's you didn't seem interested in anything else other than Chappelle. So we watched that one and then I tried to put in other ones and I was like, this is awful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we turned them all off. <laughs> it's different. It's different. It's very hard to 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 go after that, to go into other comedy specials. Mm -hmm. You know? Cause like we tried to watch um yeah, yeah. It's a couple. Just, it's hard. I don't want to say their names. Yeah, like they're great want, comedians. I don't want to hurt them. <laughs> no. It's just not it's not the same. Yeah, it's not at all. Yeah. He's uh, he's the greatest. Hands down. Hands down the greatest. Nobody hmm. even comes close. Hmm. Like, especially alive today, no one comes close. Yeah. You know, it's like there's Bill Burr, there's Louis C.K., there's Cat Williams, but none of it's, it's like, it's like, I don't know. Everybody's just fighting for first. He's the Trump of comedians. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. But uh, yeah, that's it. What else you got? That's it. All right, guys, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff, and go check out the special if you have Netflix. It's there already. It's called The Dreamer. Just type in Dave Chappelle. It'll probably say recently added. Check it out. This is not an ad. It's just, it's, it's, it's something you should do. Trust me, you will get a good laugh. And this goes for anybody, any orientation, any pronoun you are, you will, any ability or non-ability you got. You will find this funny, 100%. And other than that, we are out. Bye.